Welcome to Empire Radio on the Ether, bringing you the news across the temporal ether, where it happens, when it happens, happened, will, or might happen, on ESR, Eternal State Radio, Transtemporal. Coming up immediately on our broadcast, we're bringing you the latest in Empire-mandated revisions to the timeline. First, the Empire would like to inform the city of Flickering Falls that it has firmly established the city's appearances throughout history. And, the Flickering Falls Tourism Board will be publishing a 200,000-page document listing the time period, approximate interstellar coordinates, and duration of each appearance. This will assist visitors from throughout the Empire in catching a scenic one to two second glimpse of Flickering Falls as it becomes barely corporeal, shocks, and or kills any civilians whose matter is displaced by the appearance, and just as quickly vanishes back into the ether. The Empire's spokesperson stated that he predicted a significant increase in tourism revenue and the slaughter of the Empire's enemies, thanks to these amendments to the timeline. Additionally, because of recent citizen meddling, the Empire has implemented Mandate 3043, which prohibits the use of teleportation devices in periods predating Epoch 15. Anyone caught violating this order will be labeled a witch in the history records of the period and summarily exiled to the outer boundaries of time. And now, a brief word from our overlords. The Eternal Empire would like to remind everyone of the stunning advances in Aether study taking place right here in your very own radiant city of Flickering Falls. As the only stable, navigable source of cascading ether, Flickering Falls is on the frontmost of humanity's ever-growing grasp on the entirety of our universe. So please, the next time you think of begrudging the Empire its 20% tax on goods, remember all the good your tax bill Eternyards are doing by paying for respected researchers' new, gold-plated, hyper-sealed transportation dirigible. Remember, the complaining about taxes carries a 500 Eternyad fine to be carried out by immediate payment or removed from your current time stream by the Ashen Breath. This has been your nameless voice of the Eternal Empire. Always good to hear from the ladies in the golden robes. Some of our listeners just tuning in might want more information about just what kind of research this ether tax is funding, and I'm sure we'll be happy to report on that just as soon as the Empire returns our scientific correspondent from the dark reaches of the Outer Lentacular Nebula, where he was accidentally flung. For now, down to business. Here to help us discuss the booming restaurant industry and everyone's favorite addition to the Greater Flickering Falls metropolitan area, the Steampunk Stills, is James Johnston. Actually, it's Gerard Jin. Uh, James is a name from another time, another place, another dimension. Sorry, J- Gerard. Sorry, but the Empire mandates that we can't talk about any other dimensions during airtime, so we'll have to cut that last bit out. Anyway, we have Gerard Jin here on our show from the popular new distilla pub, The Winking Quasar, to talk with us about the exciting kinds of business opportunities brought into the city by the development and annexation of the stills. Money isn't our business in the stills. We're not one of those late century business capitals, you know. We're on the frontier of bringing life back to the basics. That's what the stills are all about. But ever since the steampunk stills was stitched into the fabric of our city's existence, you've seen massive boosts in the restaurant business there, haven't you? My numbers here say that even the districts surrounding the stills are seeing a 150% boost in revenues. That's just people joining the steampunk way of life, realizing the only way to survive when you have the whole expanse of space and time open up to humanity is to scale it back. Cut out the advanced, algorithmic crap and just go back to the peak of humanity. But isn't the time period Steampunk Stills was drawn from part of humanity's third dark age? <laughs> and sorry, we're getting really off topic here. Maybe this will be a little more on track. You attribute the aesthetics of Steampunk Stills to drumming up business? You just don't get it. It's about how you live your life, not about how many Eternates you can count. Is... is that a flask? Are you drinking on it? 
Oh god, what is that? It's a new breed of aged drum we came up with for the Quasar. We went back to the dawn of time to get some ingredients and whoa! Is it supposed to jump like that? <laughs> Sorry, listeners. We had a bit of a hiccup there, and the ashen breath have cordoned off half of my studio to investigate the hopping horrors Mr. Johnston appears to have inadvertently smuggled through time in an aging cask. The officers have assured me that once they destroy and reassemble the molecules of the studio, I'll be right back on the air. Until then, please enjoy a word from our sponsors. Alright, let's see how this goes. My grandson wanted me to do this. Are you interested in an exciting career careening through space and time with nary a care in the world? Would you like to see distant moons astronomers will never discover in times where the pencil is mightier than magic than share your experience with others? <coughs> Radio stations like ESR and universities like Cupid Community College are looking for exactly you. But that's not why we're here, Sonny. If you're considering a daredevil career studying the ins and outs of space and time explorations, first of all, you're an idiot. Anyways, Empire, ex Empire History, Experimental Time Travel, Military Service, Transtemporal Commerce, or a variety of other stimulating careers. Or you might just be forgetting something. I think I forgot something myself, like my glaucoma. <clears throat> With an entire universe and more than 500 trillion years worth of history to explore, believe it or not, older than me, there's a lot out there that can kill you in fascinating and horrific ways. Freak meteor storms, for example, erasure from the timeline, that happened to my buddy Billy. Uh, incorrect calculations, landing you smack dab in the middle of a star that was your Uncle Jimmy. Temporal quakes, Sesla glimmers, matter rearrangements, Sinestrian encounters. I had one of those once. It was in the winter of 1492 QB. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, protonic decay. The possibilities are endless. Just like our beautiful empire. Wink, wink. But that's not going to stop every intrepid adventurer, is it? Uh, it didn't stop you, my brother Billy. Are you still planning on going even after that list? Well, you definitely need a trip down the padded brick road, but I believe it's time to consider temporal insurance from Time Scam. Their coverage handles accidental death, dismemberment, erasure, and a variety of other gruesome, ghastly deaths that I almost wound myself up in, and it ensured that I didn't end up haunting my loved ones with debt. Their patented system rotates payments through a variety of banks throughout the history to gain interest to be withdrawn upon my debt and distributed to my bill collectors and family members for generations to come. Time scam and temporal insurance. They're licensed to legally steal money throughout history to console my family with fat stacks of cash while they cope with my horrible decisions. Time scam by time travelers for time travelers. And trust me, it's totally not a scam. It's totally not a scam. Welcome back, listeners. Earlier in the broadcast, we mentioned the New Empire Mandate 3043, which labels anyone using advanced technology after the dawn of life and before the year 15 billion a witch, and blatantly marks them with an imperceptible flashing neon sign for any temporal operatives who might be covertly acting in the area. For this episode's Portraits of the Empire segment, we have with us a real, live heretic and living time criminal. What makes him special is that he has not already been brutally murdered by the Ashen Breath or deleted from the timeline by Harmonians. Here to actually discuss being a witch, Johann Adelgreif. Johann, it says in the historical records that you were visited by several angels who then gave you the ability to banish evil and scourge the monarchs with rods of iron. Now, we all know that every story has a bit of truth, but ESR has informed me that you are not, in fact, native to initial Earth around Epoch 14.9. When are you from, and what's caused you to be excommunicated from your original timeline? Where am I from? Huh, that's not quite as easy an answer as you'd think it'd be. Currently, 
I am in the primitive year of sixteen hundred and thirty six. And as for my past, where I am from, well, let's just say I have traveled many times to many places in my years. I have seen both the absolute limit of technology that humanity can muster, and made weapons out of rocks and bones with Neanderthals. I've flown in the magical hover subs to the floating city of Gilzenor to drink with kings and dance with maidens. I've watched as civilization after civilization has fallen, fighting war after war with innocent young men fighting and dying with no rational reason why. Crying children thrown from cliffs by high priests as sacrifices to please one of many gods, only to bring endless and meaningless suffering to countless people. My past is a profound cocktail of your past, present, and future. Of time itself, even. You want to know where I'm from? I'm from everywhere. Excuse me if this is out of place, Mr. Allegri, but our listeners will certainly be curious. It's extremely rare for someone to commit a temporal crime and evade the Harmonians for even a few minutes. Normally, by now, someone in your position has had every atom in their body tied to a silver thread which is then pulled in a transfinite number of directions, screaming in agony, as they're curled toward a black hole. Can you explain to us how you were able to escape this fate and, possibly, if you have time, pun intended, why you were labeled a witch? <laughs> yes, well, I can't say these Harmonians haven't tried. I've sensed that they are around. I've been able to sniff out their tracks throughout time trying to find me. And they smell close. What do you mean, they smell close? Eh, let's just say I'm not quite as human as I once was. Would you care to elaborate on that? Are you aware of how filthy things are in this time period? Well, I... You see, I come from a time where microbes have been filtered into the air that constantly clean your skin at all times. A time where a shower or bathing does not mean cleaning yourself with a simple chemical compound such as H2O. But by being sprayed by a highly reactive sanitizing agent made from no less than 42 separate chemicals. I walked out and saw townspeople soaking themselves in large ponds that clean themselves. Do you know what's in those ponds? Urine. And not just theirs. Deers. Ducks. Maybe even bears. E. coli. And a cornucopia of strains chomping at the bit for the chance to murder you. The day will come when all of the dirt and the germs and the excrement constantly being added into that water will merge together to form a mobile, sentient being, which is a world I want no part of. Mr. Allegri, going back for a moment, based on your remarks, I can infer that you have been a member of the military, the Blood Wolves being my best guess, as a five-headed chaos beast would be a bit amiss on initial Earth. Since you've mentioned your heightened senses, I can only assume that you were once a member of the Quorum. Would that be fair to say? If by member you mean genetically modified and forced to do unspeakable things throughout the fabric of time itself, well, then I suppose you could say that, yeah, I was once a member. Well, judging by that, your exile must not have started before your military service ended. Since I've never heard of a scandal with your name attached, I can only assume you've either changed it or your transgression was rather recent. What, in fact, did you actually do that had you expatriated and branded as some kind of sorcerer. No, 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 no. I do not bend history to hide my regrettable acts of misjudgment. While I do not wholly agree with all the actions that I have committed during my time at the Quorum, I do have a sense of honor, you know. I was a decorated military operative chosen by my superiors to keep a watchful eye throughout time to eliminate any problems that may cause a disruption to the Empire. I did my duty, and if I say so myself, I did it well. Ah, uh, well, one day after successful operation in the primitive time period, I was asked to celebrate with the high officials of the time. And you know how things go. A few glasses of ceremonial wine, too many. One thing leads to another. And I might have accidentally banished a caravan of children to the realm of eternal sadness. <laughs> yep, that happened. Now, while now, looking back on it, I do regret what I did. At the time, it was the funniest thing I had ever seen. All these kids crying and screaming as they're falling into the abyss of sadness. 
Now, I don't know if any of you guys have ever been to the Eternal Realm of Sadness, but it's no picnic, let me tell you. Um, every emotion that you have, every terrible, terrifying, bad emotion is quantified and tripled. Even physical attributes that are tied to these bad emotions are tripled themselves. This one kid, when he was falling in there, he had to defecate himself. Now, I have no perfect way of explaining what this looked like. The only thing that I can describe it as is... Have you ever seen a party popper? Except take the party popper, make it so much worse, and add in the splash zone at a sea parks. That is the best way I can describe what it was. And oh my god, that was the best thing I'd ever seen. Now, unfortunately, a couple of locals may or may not have seen through to the other side, and they could have perhaps just become some sort of highly acidic, gibbering mass and it was unleashed on a nearby village. I mean, it was, it was fun to watch. It was fun to watch at the time. I was kind of drunk on ceremonial wine. Bad decisions happened, and then one thing led to another. Suddenly, I was a monster. Suddenly, none of my accomplishments mattered. I did one bad thing, and to them, I was a witch, and therefore, I was exiled here. And I've been stuck here. Hiding in time. Trying to find a... What? What? What, what is that? That's, that's not a smell I recognize. Who is that? Who's there? Hey! Who did you send here? Continuing to play your... Oh, I believe we've lost Johan there. Between you and me, listeners, I think he stayed on the ether with us a bit too long and gave the Harmonians time to pinpoint his location. Well, listeners, we're almost out of time, but you know we like to leave our audience with that feel-good feeling. Every species has theories about how their world will end. Some say in fire, some say in ice. Some suspect a graphic and violent nuclear holocaust with citizens dying of radiation poisoning and a life-consuming blast. Others run around with cardboard signs yelping about impending extra-dimensionals and astrian literally eating the time away from every living being on their world as they slowly turn to dust. A few crackpots even say that the Eternal Empire will be the once and future downfall of every world that's ever been. (laughs) Ah, how silly. This week, one little girl might just have an answer for her planetoid. Maya Adams, age 7, woke up one beautiful morning last week, relatively speaking, to find her asteroid a little busier than normal. Tucked away in a small suburb of the universe somewhere near the 16 billions, Maya's home had never been terribly interesting. B-374Z was a modest hub for trade for thousands of years, close to its parent star, and had just enough artificial atmosphere to go out and enjoy a summer day with lemonade year-round. Maya, what can you tell us about the last day on your asteroid? Are still there? Hey! Hi! Okay, so... Okay, so, um... Hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on. Um, can you explain to me one more time? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so... Last week, you used to live on an asteroid, right? hmm But you don't anymore, because something happened. But now, you live in this giant city called Flickering Falls, where you can go anywhere or do anything. Okay. So what happened to your asteroid? Why can't you live there anymore? Because it was too busy and it was destroyed. What destroyed it? The meteor. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. And how did it make you feel when you had to leave? Weird. Yeah. Are you still there? Yes, I am. Um. So you said you felt weird. Yeah. Why do you think you felt weird? My friends were Oh, your friends weren't there. Did your friends make it out of the asteroid? No. No? Have you made any new friends? Yes. Yeah. What kinds of friends have you made? Nice ones. Nice ones. And what's the city like? You live in a new city, right? It has a lot of waterfalls and rocks and horses and animals. Yeah. There are a lot of strange creatures in this new town, huh? Yeah. 
Do you like them though? Yeah. What do you like the most about this new city? Um, that it has a lot of waterfalls. But some of those waterfalls are interesting colors, right? Mm-hmm. Which one's your favorite? Um, the pink ones. Yeah. And no. are you planning to go to school anytime soon? No. No? Are you too smart for schools here? Yes. Well, what else do you like about the city besides animals and falls? Um, that it has a lot of sweets and desserts. Sweet desserts? Yeah. So the dessert area is your favorite, huh? Yeah. Do you prefer desserts from China? From the year 10,000? No. What's your favorite? No. Oh, yeah? Did you find a lot of it in Flickering Falls? Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. Well, Maya, we have to get going, but thank you very much. It was good to have you on the program. Mm, thank you. This has been Empire Radio on the Ether. Coming up next, please enjoy another 13 years of pure, deafening silence, followed by the death of stars. We'll see you next month, or whenever our... <clears throat> We'll see you next month, or whenever our existence is again corporeal enough to be perceived. Thanks for tuning in. Safe travels, citizens. This has been ESR, Empire Radio on the Ether, Episode 1, A Stitch in Time. This episode was written by Richard Poskosen, Adam Brindle, and Drew Copenhaver. Original music by Color Theory. Link in the description. Please check him out. He's amazing. The radio host was played by Drew Copenhaver. The pleasing female voice, slash voice of the Empire, was Kendra Warner. Gerard Jin was played by Seth. The Timescam spokesperson was Justin Shelley. Johan Adelgrief was Adam Brindle. And Maya Adams was played by Nora C. If you enjoyed what we did, please talk to us in the comments. Let us know. If you have any ideas for future episodes, message us at empirestateradio at gmail.com or message us via YouTube. There is also a Twitter account set up for this to give you random bits of Empire tidbits and update you on the progress of the episodes. We are hoping to release one every month or so, so please come and talk to us. We'd love to hear from you. We are also hoping to sometime soon have downloads set up so that we can provide MP3s of all our episodes. Thanks for joining us. Have a good one.